Why is basic research on alternative battery concepts for lithium-ion batteries so important? Well, I think research, as we know, of course, is, is important in, in general because uh, research um, opens new avenues, new paths into our future. And um, this future is never linear and you never can really predict what happens. I think the past has so many examples for that. Uh, nobody, for example, would have predicted 10 years ago that the so-called lithium iron phosphate cathode material would have such a great renaissance now by the Chinese cell makers and Chinese chemical companies. So we always need alternatives to what is existing because the better is, of course, the enemy of the good. Um, so we always need a, alternatives um, because we really can't predict safely the future. And this is the same, of course, for, for batteries. Um, there is always, I would say, cutting-edge technology, uh, but the demand for improved systems, for systems with different properties, for applications we maybe do not envisage today, uh, may need novel cell chemistries. So that's why we always need uh, research, and particularly also in the field of batteries, uh, to be prepared when it comes to the demand for new technologies. What does your theme, the path of the iron, mean? Well, the path of the iron, yes, that's uh, something we, during discussion of the new research program, um, found is, is a very good description of what is going on in a cell. And in order to advance new cell chemistries, to improve cell chemistries, um, you have to design materials, combinations of materials, interfacing materials, that are able to transport an ion, and this ion is transferring the charge within the cell. We know that outside of a cell, charge is transported by electrons, so the electronic circuitry, which we are using in our applications. So if you every day use something electric, no, you drag electrons across your devices, but in the electrochemical cell, and that's the ingenious concept of uh, electrochemical cells, Ions have to transport the charge and they have to move from one side of the cell to the other side and back in rechargeable cells. And this path means that the ion, if, um, well, just for a second, we uh, feel like flying through um, or being a train uh, moving across Europe. You're passing so many different regions with different properties. You pass borders. Uh, that may delay things, the transport properties, the tracks are different. And the ion has to adapt to all these different environments and to all these borders. And that's something which makes battery research, I, I would say in its everyday business, very complex, um, that it is one ion you consider, for example, the sodium ion or the magnesium ion that has not only to stay, but also to particularly to move across so many different systems that we thought, uh, well, the path of the ion across the cell and these diverse environments is a good description of what is the challenge. Where exactly do you see the major scientific challenges in the negative electrodes, the SEI, the electrolyte and the positive electrode of post-lithium technology? Well, I would say the major Challenges, first of all, that there is so many different challenges, as you already um, summarized them. And in fact, uh, let me start from the positive electrode, because typically the positive electrode, which is often named cathode, uh, has a the lowest specific capacity. That means um, the charge that can be stored per mass or volume of this positive electrode will typically is lower than on the anode side. Um, so for the um, capacity of a cell with respect to volume or mass, typically the cathode is limiting. Um, that often means that people focus on, on this positive electrode side, uh, but in fact we found that often it is the anode that in principle often can have more charge stored in the same volume or mass, but often its kinetics is limiting. So the speed the rate with which we can really uh, transfer charge. So the cathode side 
often has its issue with the specific capacity and research really goes in the direction of um, finding ways to, uh, in a bit brute, I would say, expression to press more charge into the cathode material and also to get it out, of course. Uh, the anode side, uh, where typically we can have more charge per volume or mass, uh, often uh, has to be significantly improved when it comes really to the rate. Uh, and this is, for example, just as, as an example, if you think of lithium-ion batteries and what is limiting the fast charging cap capacity of modern lithium-ion batteries, it's in fact the negative electrode, so the anode, not the positive side. And uh, any advancement in the anode, of course, will bring also major advancement to the full set. Yes, and then we come, of course, to what connects these electrodes, and that's the electrolyte. Um, and electrolytes typically, I would say, react, can react with both the negative and the positive electrode material. And that is something we have to, um, to mitigate, to tackle, or to overcome. So we need to design these interfaces. And um, as I already said, um, when it came to the, or when it comes to the path of the ion, um, an ion has to pass all these different phases. Um, and I used this picture of, uh, let's say, of traveling across Europe with all the different, uh, I would say, tracks and borders to overcome. And you may sometimes experience issues. This is the same for the, for the poor iron uh, passing, passing the cell. So I think we have ideas for all these different um, components uh, for the different uh, cell concepts. The different cell concepts rely on different shuttle ions, so the, the ion is different. And each of these ions needs, of course, spe specific combinations of, of materials to construct uh, high-performance and powerful cells. Um, so there is various challenges that have to be overcome. And in our research program, we have addressed, I would say, the most attractive ones when it comes really to the point, if we overcome them, what is being gained? What ideas or concepts do you intend to use to overcome these hurdles? Well, most of these hurdles, of course, are electrochemical or chemical in essence. Um, so that means, of course, we need good chemical concepts, first of all. Uh, one of these concepts we found very, very useful is that we need to hybridize materials. We have to combine materials that typically are not being combined because often uh, the, the demand for let's, materials with new properties or the improved properties means that you have to achieve materials combinations that in principle by theory cannot be gained. Uh, so typically something that is for electrolytes, solid electrolytes, for example, that have a very, very high conductivity for the ions so that they can be good um, connecting materials between the two electrodes. Often they have a very high conductivity but are not so stable. And then if you go deeper into theory, you find that it's exactly what exactly makes the high conductivity is or makes also the issue of the low stability. So how to, how to break that? That needs really breaking paradigms. And um, we think that making new materials that combine completely different materials classes to hybridize them on the nano scale uh, may open up uh, new opportunities. So that's one major, I would say, theme and object objective of the cluster to systematically explore hybrid materials. And the other, of course, is to use the power of, uh, of uh, modern theory uh, together with the uh, computer simulation. Um, and in many cases today, complex problems can, first of all, often in a bit rough way, I would say, in a kind of uh, um, not so detailed or, let's say, so precise way, one can calculate potential path to a new material, properties of a class of new materials, And if one in a theoretical a computer experiment, which often can be run faster and cheaper, um, if we find something attractive and think, okay, that might be a good solution, then we can go that path experimentally. And that's why we created together with the research area A, in which 
uh, all the um, cell cans concept and chemistries are being explored. We created also an independent research area, not independent, but an own research area on, on data. So um, computation and very careful consideration of the data and digging into the data, finding maybe hidden correlations is something we will heavily rely on. What research milestones have you set yourself for the next seven years? Well, I would say the um, advantage of a uh, research cluster funded by the German Research Foundation is, first of all, that it's research-driven and not so much, I would say, mission-driven as a uh, project funded directly by industry or um, federal ministry for education and research. So typically we don't have true quantitative milestones. I think what we consider as our milestones, uh, the general milestone and also individual milestones is, of course, first of all, with our cluster and the research, we want really to have impact in the field of electrochemical energy storage. Um, now, this is a very broad term to, to create impact, but impact means changing the way other people think. So if we can find novel path, novel routes, avenues, uh, novel options for future electrochemical energy storage, that will change the way people think. And that's, I would say, one of the, the it's the biggest milestone, I think. The individual, more individual milestones would be, was that in the different cell concepts, that we really achieve performances, materials with um, uh, before not seen properties and performance that also helps with these individual systems uh, to change the way people think. For example, in the case of magnesium ion batteries, people think because the magnesium ion has two charges, two positive charges, it's typically rather slow in most electrolytes. Also, it's not so easy to create negative and positive electrode materials that can be charged and discharged sufficient, sufficiently fast. So if we would be able to overcome that, this would be extremely impactful and would change, of course, the way people consider magnesium ion batteries. So I would say our milestones are really to achieve breakthroughs uh, in all of the cell concepts we, we consider. And breakthroughs really mean um, changing the way people consider these systems. Why is Polis well qualified to master the scientific challenges of post-lithium technology? Well, I think Polis is in fact the world's biggest um, enterprise and research cluster on post-lithium post -lithium storage. Um, and this is all needed. Um, the challenges are, are huge to find new systems, uh, new cell concepts and to explain things and also to consider and To, to prove that what we consider as a potential solution is really truly sustainable. That's something we didn't discuss before, but our third research area is sustainability. And uh, of course, one of the key missions of the cluster is not only to develop post-lithium storage, but also to, um, I would say, to um, secure that these solutions are truly sustainable. And uh, true sustainability is um, quite a complex subject. It's not just counting atoms and saying, okay, we use elements from less critical resources. No, it also means that um, social, political, uh, envir not only environmental, but also economic issues and, and constraints are being considered. So with this third research area, together with data and, and the cell concepts and cell chemistries, uh, we have quite a number of uh, experts from these different fields together that really enable us to consider post-lithium search from a really holistic point of view, not only from chemistry, not only by also simulating and calculating um, novel cell concepts and materials and trying to understand them, but also to really secure the true sustainability at the end.